Thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Rayhan Ali. I'm the managing partner of Alpha Co Partners, and I'm really excited to introduce Yelena from GACON. So GACON is a zero add-on which integrates G Sheets with Zero QuickBooks and HubSpot and others as well. Yelena is the product owner of GACON products. I've personally worked with her and she's been really helpful with us when, when we've tried to get some help in terms of using Zero and GACON. I'll pass it on to her in a little while. Just so you know, we'll have Q&A at the end. You can enter your Q&As on, on the chat and this webinar is also recorded. So what we will be doing is we'll be sharing the recording with you. We'll, we'll upload it on YouTube but we'll also share it with you after the webinar. So, Yelena, do you want to wait for a little while to, for more registrants to come, or do you want, you want to just start? Uh, yeah, let's, you feel? Let, let's wait, right? Let's wait a little bit. Okay, no problem. I mean, if the attendees who, who are with us at the moment, if you just want to put in, your, in the chat box what accounting software you're using currently, that would be quite useful as well for us to know so that we can you know, give you a bit more information on those, those, the functionality that's... Um, that's relevant for you. At the moment, we're talking today about Zero and GACON, but that'd be quite useful. Okay, so Jack Jordan's using Zero. Okay, so Nihar is using Zero QuickBooks and Zoho. So obviously, Yelena, uh, does, uh, will GACON be integrating with Zoho, or are you, you guys just focused on Zero and QuickBooks, Yelena? We have Zero, a QuickBooks, and HubSpot, yes. Zoho is our future, so it's maybe coming next, next, next uh, year. Okay. I mean, I've, I've never used, I've used Zoho here and there, but we obviously only focus on Zero. But does Zoho also have an open API the way you can pull data out and in? Yes, absolutely. They do have secure okay. API. Yes, yes, yes. We're not sure, okay. so we need to do a little bit more investigation, so make sure it's secure because it's our main yeah. requirements. So make sure we have secure channels and all yeah. this technical stuff. So as soon as this company fit our requirements so we are mm -hmm. kind of happy to implement it yes but Zoho it's our radar yes we would like to have it probably next year yeah I mean I know that Zoho is quite popular out here um, as well in the UAE um, I guess it's quite popular in the US as well right but QuickBooks yes. is probably number yes, one in the US yes yes I think yeah. QuickBooks number one and then Zoho then we do have in Canada, it's called FreshBooks, so that's popular. Oh, yeah, yeah, FreshBooks, yeah. yeah. All right, should we start? What do you think? Yeah, if you want to start, I'm, go I'm just going to go on the other uh, WhatsApp and see if there's uh, other people who want to join. So I'm, I'm happy to give you the floor. Perfect, perfect. Thank you, Rehan, so much. So I'm Yelena, and what we have, we've found the formula, which we very nice feed our company and you guys as a client. Google Sheets plus zero equal JCon. So I'm product owner, I'm doing marketing and operations, and I'm going to do today product overview, pretty much high level and demo. And then I'm planning to leave for 10, 15 minutes. So you guys can ask any questions you might have. You can write, you can ask. So who we are? So we are US-based company, we are Xero recommended partners since 2019. We emerging application partner since 2018 in Xero Award Americas. So we certified by Intuit. This is our QuickBooks online application. This February 2020, it took for us nice 10 months to make it happen. And we also have in our line, product line, HubSpot application. So we application partner since 2018. Our product line, like I said, Gcon for Xero, Gcon for QuickBooks, Gcon for HubSpot, and we offer AWS for people who is using as a development tools. So I want to cover a little bit Google Spreadsheets benefits and uniqueness of the product. I do know you might familiar with all these features, but I would just like to highlight a little bit. So Google Sheets, first of all, is available for free. So no installation required. It's absolutely simple, amazing tool for sharing. So you can share by clicking button on the right corner of your screen and share your documents, your spreadsheet. This is your colleague, customers, client. Collaboration, it's the important thing about Google Spreadsheet. 
you can edit the same document in real time. So it's great, it's great, great tool for the team communications and collaboration. Absolutely amazing cloud storage, right? You use it, you save all your documents there, spreadsheet, documents, PowerPoint. So what the saves? Yes, it's amazing. Sometimes you forgot to save your document in the Microsoft Excel and you close your computer. Oops, all your work is done. So you have to do it again. What is saved? It's amazing property. Version controls. It's absolutely amazing because you can go back to your previous historical version, bring it up and start working from beginning if you feel that version was suitable for your needs. So it's amazing. It's amazing capability for Google Spreadsheet, even though we don't understand Google Spreadsheets behind Microsoft Excel and the difference is 21 years between them, right? But it's still, it's perfect tools. It's a very nice technology. So we are GACON. So we use Google platform, we use Google technology, and it gives us and give you the ability to implement so many nice features which very useful for your business. I will go to the next slide. So what GACON for Xero? As a simple to say, it's a counting connector. But if I'm going to dive inside and show you the tool, you can see, okay, it's a full blown application. It's a lot of features, a lot of functionalities. So on the nutshells, it's integrate Google Spreadsheet Disk Zero and it's synchronized data in both directions. So when we talk about both directions, so we're talking about downloads, when you download your data from your multiple Xero entities to your Google Spreadsheets, and then we talk about uploads, so you go to different directions. So you, up, you upload your data from Google Spreadsheets to your multiple Xero entities. It's a lot of opportunity for automation, for download and upload processes, and which eliminate a lot of human mistakes. Again, we are truly cloud-based application because we use AWS, we use Google technology on Google platform. You can manipulate data, you can customize data, and you can generate your custom reports and automate reports and download fresh accounting data by creating your own queries. So this is very high level, what our application offered to you. Who are our customers? Definitely, as soon as we integrated this QuickBooks and Zero, yes, it's a lot of accountants, advisors, cloud advisors, bookkeepers, small and medium company business owners. I emphasize a little bit here, we are not enterprise, enterprise software. We cannot handle ton of millions of records just because we don't have power for that. But small and medium companies, this is whom we serve. Cloud software companies, some companies use us for their purpose. And if we talk about HubSpot, a piece of our product, we have a lot of marketing agency, always can do marketing departments of the bigger company. Again, small, medium, and medium size of businesses. What we offer to clients, our application based on templates. So as soon as you grab the concept of template, this is how you're going to use our application. First, you create templates for reports, for query, it's your raw financial data, and you create your templates for automatic workflow. It's kind of templates, how to handle your templates. It's kind of confusing, but nutshell, this is how it is. And you create templates to upload your data. And these templates can be refreshed manually, and you can automate the process. You can set up all the templates for multiple zero organizations. You set up automation, you can close everything and it will run independently. And what you have to do, you have to monitor. You have to monitor your queries, you have to monitor your processes, and I'm going to show you how to monitor data, data refresh. We offer, uh, like I said, it's called zero accounting data. This is your raw financial data. You can pull projects from zero assets, payrolls. We also offer audit trial data. This is your historical notes for set of objects. And it looks like you pull your raw accounting data. You create your queries, you put your select statement, your workloads, your order by, 
and you got your data. Again, this part can be automated as well. The nice feature in our application, you can share this report with your clients. You can set it up automatically or you can share through Google Drive because we do use Google technology in real time. And during automation, you can set up notification to your customers and these reports in a form of Microsoft Excel or spreadsheet link or PDF files can be sent to multiple clients, whomever you want to say, even though you can be on vacation that time. So automation will work for you. A very nice feature would be offer save your custom templates. So what does it mean? Like I said, application based on templates. You might spend to create your templates. You might spend some time to create those templates. And if you move from one organization to another or from one spreadsheet to another, you don't want to start it from scratch. So this functionality will allow you to save your template and reuse it. Reuse it and share this with your team members so your team member can reuse it. You can reuse it in different tab of the spreadsheet or you can send it to client if you set up your client environment through us. What else do we offer? We offer upload data to Xero tables. We offer about 20 plus different tables, which you can upload from Google spreadsheet to your Xero entities. Uh, some of them are invoices, words, POs, bank transaction, manual journals. And I'm going to show you as one example how to upload data. How else you can use our tool? You can use our tool as a perfect feed to your BI solution. So BI solution, you can use as simple as Google Charts, which is built in Google Spreadsheet. You can set up data source and move data to Google Data Studio, Tableau, Power BI, Microsoft Power BI. Tableau, me specifically, I love Tableau because you can drag and drop and everything colorful. And we do have documentations how to set up this application step by step. I'm going to show you a quick chart. And what is the beauty of using our application? We refresh it. So we refresh it uh, every three hours, every five hours. Account receivable payables, you can refresh it daily. And this fresh data can automatically fit your BI solution. So basically, you will have live dashboards, your graphs, your uh, tables, whatever you want to put in your BI solution to present it to your clients or your customers or your team or upper management, whoever it needs to be. Um, we offer automatic workflow. It's a nice flexible solution, uh, how you can automate your processes based on different templates, frequency, refresh frequency, Another feature is you can schedule backup, backup of your historical data. All of us know we might have issue from time to time. Internet is working, connection is working, API is down, all nine yards, right? But backups allow you automatic backups. You can pick up, you can set up it automatically, allow to have your data somewhere in your storage, in your cloud. So you can use it. You can use it for time being, until this system come back, right? Data monitoring and alerts. Uh, you can monitor your data and you can set up alerts. So it's very nice functionality. It can be used, let's say you pull invoices. You pull invoices and uh, you do have uh, certain invoices which is outstanding. And this condition can be set up as an alert and the email, automatic email can be sent to your client set and said, okay, this is outstanding invoice, which needs to be paid. So for this reason, alerts is very useful here. So again, we offer, like I said, when you email your customer and notify your customer about generated reports or queries, you can convert your file into Excel, Microsoft Excel file, CSV and PDF different, using different layouts. So it can be landscape, portrait layouts, or you can send a link link to your spreadsheet. And uh, one of interesting use cases that people use that our customer users to clean up data. And we're fine. As soon as it works for you, we're fine. If you like to clean up data using spreadsheet, yeah, go ahead, why not? All right, so I finished my high level overview and I'm going to dive into 
demo. Should I stop for a while and see if anyone has a questions for now before I jump into demo? No, should we move on? All right. So moment you install our application, you will have the under ads done, it will be gconfig zero. And I already log in to my demo company and this is many options what you're going to have. So this switch organizations allow you to switch between zero and so this is your get data when you're talking about creating your own query and pull raw financial data you're using that menu options this menu includes yeah. get financial data we can get historical audit trail data historical notes and history again you create your own query you can get assets and project so what i'm going to start i'm going to show you get accounting reports so what we have here, this is how many reports available for you. So you can pull account transactions, you can pull or age payable receivables. The cash summary is important reports. Executive summary, not of it, profit and loss. So this is main report that everyone uses. Uh, trial balances, trial balances, new tracking summary. Taking summary, it's about you have opening balance, net activities, and a closing balance. Uh, quotes and PO, PO reports. So I'm going to show you profit and loss. I think it's most popular. So what you can do here, you can set up your static date range and set up, okay, I need profit and loss for one year. You can do it. Or more recent data, you can set up dynamically by clicking this icon. So what does it mean? We're now in September. So moment you set up dynamic refresh, it start this, this month, it's September, and it's automatically moved to next month. So you don't have to touch template. It will be keep running in September, then October, November, and so on. So for me, for our purpose, I just show you, we start this September. This is our monthly P&L. Uh, I choose all 60 accounts. You can open and select whatever accounts you need. If you choose all, it automatically add new account. If you create new account in the Xero side, this is straightforward filtering, right? Cash transaction, compare this. I'm going to change it to six periods just to make this run a little bit faster. You can put ascending, descending order. And here I would like to cover a report layout. If you have traditional, if you select traditional layout, you will see traditional layout, which is, has income, your uh, revenue, your gross, your minus your operating expenses and net income on the bottom. If you open, if you choose historical layout, it will kind of open up fields for you and it's easy to feed this data in your BI solution. And region option, this is my tracking category. So I want to show you traditional layout and number two option, it's called change pool settings. It's through the whole application. And this option responsible how your data look like in your spreadsheet. So if you look now, it's create new sheet. This is checked. As soon as I'm sitting here on the new tab, I said, okay, I don't want to create new tab. I can use this existing tab and I can start this A1 cell. And now what you can do, you can create deep link to zero. If you want to, it means you click on the deep link and it will open zero page for you. If you need to keep original formatting, let's say you create color and different fonts and you want to keep it after data refresh. So you can click this button and it will keep your own formatting. If you need to have only summary, you can choose, okay, I need only summary. If you need to remove empty rows, this is the way how to do it. And let's say if you have multiple templates, which is called PNL, and you have ability now to set, to check name, to put name what you really want. So let me put uh, profit and loss 2020, right? I can put September because this is how I start. And I will execute this uh, query. So what does it mean? When I click execute, it saves my report template 
and it's pulled data from my demo organization. So this is how you're going to set up your first template. So as soon as it's done, you can see PNL report, which is which will pull data from Xero organization to the Google Sheet. I want to also mention while we're waiting, we're not saving data. So that's why sometimes when you refresh, it takes some time. So if you save your template on cloud, you save only structure. So if you're not reliable for your data, we're not saving. In case of Ferro, we can check logs file on our site if something failing, but we're not having your data. So it's only yours. So this is how traditional layout look like. So I start in September. I'll go six periods in the backward. I said, okay, I need to have year to date. I choose it. You might not want to have it. This is your income, total income. This is your purchase. This is your expenses, operational expenses, and this is net profit. So this is how it works. So now what you can do, let's say you want to refresh data manually. This is the way how you refresh data manually. You click on a refresh zero data in the current tab. This is how it uh, will be refreshing here. If you want to refresh all templates through your uh, spreadsheet, uh, this is this is how you uh, this is how you uh, options you choose so now i'm going to show you how to save this template in cloud so i'll go to update modify delete template for the current sheet and it will open for me window on the right side so this is my template i can double click and open template so you can do any modifications you want i'm going to show you i'm not going to run it for now and this is your template and then if you want to share on cloud you use this icon so you save this template in cloud and the structure is there so i put i save it so now let's assume i open new organization i switch right internally so i go here i'll switch i pick up new organization i cannot do it because i have only one but let's assume i open new organization and i want to run pnl to this new organization so I can go to Gcon Fox Zero. I load save template from cloud. And those are my options. So like I told in the beginning, we have three type of templates, query, report, and upload. We just create now report query. I go down and see, okay, this is our report query. I can share. Sorry, I, Elena, can I yeah. just add something? So Absolutely. I guess this is perfect for the accounting firms who may have a standard report for all clients. So let's say they wanted to share certain P&Ls or balance sheets or AR reports, and they wanted to have one standard report for all clients. I guess they'll use that same template for all clients, and then basically they don't have to create a new report all over again. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And it saves so much time because if reports can be very easy, when we move now to financial data queries, it's maybe complicated because you might have 250 attributes and you know exactly what you want. You don't want to start, start it from scratch, especially if you have five, 10, 20 zero organizations, right? You want to save your time. So now let's say you want to share this template, what you finalized is your team member, right? And somebody else will run the same template for other organizations. So this is a place to go. So you will put, email and share and it will go there so i don't want to do it now you can delete templates you can load it through icon or you can double click and this template will be loaded so now as soon as i open i assume right we open new organization i need to execute it so i need to execute it because internally this is how we save the template so i can modify it i can do whatever i want to do and i can run it and i will have here new report so this is report session i'm going to close this and i'm going to move and show you how to get accounting data it's important because sometimes what reports we're providing not enough for you or you want to really do custom query this is a way to go so when you choose your objects you will have here accounts it's credit notes. I'm just covering most popular items, inventory, invoices, manual journals, your set of payments, overpayments, payments, prepayment, purchase order, quotes, tracking category. We have this object, tracking categories as well. Repeating invoices, very popular. So let me choose invoices. 
let me choose invoices again date range here you can use as a static date range or you can move to dynamic if you would like to dynamically receive your invoices so i will move to static and i will have let's say from august i can choose from august and then i will cover a couple of icons here some of them very important some of them straightforward if you want to select all attribute you click select all and select will be your next button then we have here you see embedded objects so if you want to open up this embedded objects this is icon responsible for this. If you want to collapse everything, this is collapsing. So now I'm going to show you the icon which I personally like. So this is change order. Let me select everything. This is change order of your column. So what does it mean? So now column is going in alphabetical order. And I'm talking about invoice now. For me, it's important to have, let's say invoice ID. I'm searching for invoice ID now. And invoice ID, I want to put on the first place because I want to see invoice number and invoice ID on the first column. And next time when it's automatically refreshed, I will have this invoice ID in the first column. So I'm not going to search it through like hundreds of the attributes. So I catch it, I drag it, and I drop it. So I want to drop invoice ID here. And what I want to else move, I want to find invoice number because later on I'm going to show you how to upload. So this is invoice number. I drag this field and I drop it on the second position. So this is column change. Next time it's refresh, like I said, it will be on the first two columns. So this is what I'm looking for. So I select all attributes, but in your case, definitely, you might not need to have all attributes. I will check some of them. I don't want this. I don't want credit notes and everything else. I will keep it in our example. So now I'll move to option two. It's again, it's the same options. So we try not to confuse you guys. So change pooling settings. It's everything about your data inside Google Spreadsheet. So again, you want to keep original formatting, it's here. You don't want to keep it part of auto refresh process. You can exclude it here and you can put name. Let me see, it will be query, query invoice. I put August, August, September 2020. So I put name. So now what's happened here? So now we create our query by selecting. We select pretty much everything, a lot of fields from invoice table. So now we are going to move and create where condition. So where condition, you can do it by field. And as our example, I can choose due date. Let me choose due date before, I don't know, September 30. So this is my due date. So I select all these invoices and I need due date before September 30. And you can add more condition. This is your Boolean logic here. You can put and or all condition. Don't forget to add a click on add side. So it will be your part of added filters options. And this is your order by. So you can order by certain fields, which is here, especially when you have contact you can put order by contact name, right? Or last name. So you will have alphabetical order and ascending or descending order. And I will come back uh, here. I don't want to create new tab. I'm going to use this open tab, whatever I just opened. And I execute. Again, I execute my query. So this is my behind the scene. It's save the template and pull my invoices. Let's see if I don't have many invoices. You can see invoices and I'm going to show you a deep link, which I create here. As you can see uh, the first, this is called deep link. And if I want to see, this is my payable, right? It's my bill. So when I click on this deep link, it will open zero side and this is my bill. So now what I'm going to show you, for example, I want to upload. I want to upload data back to Xero organization, right? I pull, I start this get accounting data just to get structure. 
Otherwise, you can type it by yourself because what's happened in the middle of the process, you have to map the header of your spreadsheet to the zero fields available for this specific object. So I copy my uh, data. Let's see, I want to have receivable, just create some data. So when I'm going to insert, I don't need to have ID and I have to have new number. Let's do test one, two, three. It will be my new invoice. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to choose option, upload accounting data to demo company. And this is upload functionality. So what I'm going to do now, I can select either eventually when I create my template, I can select all rows. So you can upload per call 1000 records. And if you have more and more records, you can put your logic, but one time you can upload only thousand you can upload only new rows or if you want to do it manually you can do currently selected row like how i did now so let me choose currently selected row that many objects we have available for you so you can upload you can do cn cn allocation accounts is very popular invoices invoice payments all this overpayment manual journals it's absolutely amazing because people use a lot you can upload tracking category you can have it up to 100, what Xero suggests, but you can upload it through Google Spreadsheet. You don't have to do it one by one in the Xero site. So now you have to be here very, very careful. If you choose update operation, you have to provide ID. We're talking here about internal ID, which use in database, right? You have invoice, invoice ID. If you talk about payments, it's payment ID. If it's manual journals or transactions, transactions ID. So why do we need ID? So make sure this is like all these nice numbers over here. If you choose ID, Xero API will know which record you're talking about and it will update for you. If you're doing insertion, Xero will generate the ID automatically and send it back to you. So in my case, I'm going to pull invoices, insert invoices, and then I want the program do some mapping for me. If you see here, it's called address the first table header cell. So my header here on A2. So what I do here, I change my A2 as the first header cell, and I click this button. It's very important because what it does, it's automatically map whatever is available in the Google spreadsheet to available fields in Xero. And this is my result column. So now I'm going to show you how it looks like. You see invoice ID, it's keep it empty because it's going to generate, it's recognize invoice number, it's a spreadsheet and field in Xero type, it's recognized type. I probably don't have contacts. I have line items description and tracking category here. And I do have amounts, I do have type, and I do have statuses here. Why I focus on this uh, type and statuses, it's mandatory field when you insert your invoices and this information here just for you. This is what available values that you need to prepare in your spreadsheet in order to successfully insert these invoices. And what I want to just mention here, type. As soon as Xero has only one interface, so they use one interface for invoices and for bills. And definitely here, you have to be very accurate. If you're talking about invoices, so it has to be receivable. If you're talking about bills, it should be account payables. Just be careful here. So this is for your information. And your data is here. I did this last field, I highlighted. I can click one button and it's get highlighted. So my mapping, hopefully ready. If not, you can drag and drop. You can do it by yourself. Your program is something and I'm going to execute it now. I execute and save template. So what I'm doing now, I try to create only one record and see how my mapping works. So if based on my one record mapping works successfully i can use now change it for all rows or new rows and now this i can automate it later on and now this template is ready for you so let's see how it works 
So I'm going on the right side and what it says, it says, oh, invoice not valid status for creation because I didn't put much thoughts. So this is my result. But let's assume if it's created successfully, I will have here a success true and this is true and this ID and link will be generated. So I'm not going to debug this process, but this is a concept. So I hope everyone everyone comfortable. So it is required sometimes. So that's why when you create a template, next time you want to reuse it, you want to save it in cloud. So it's the same process. So now I'm going to jump into automation. It's very important how to automate your process. And I want to show you how to change ownership. So when you decided I need to automate the process, it's a nice way to create workflow. So what it does for you, you can combine certain templates in, this, in one workflow, which you want to schedule on the same schedule. Oh my gosh, schedule, schedule. Let's see, workflow number one, and I will put description. And you can set up status active and it will run right away or not active. So now you have the ability to choose template. So basically our application look at all these templates created on the spreadsheet and you can drag and drop. Let's see, I want to automate report, only one. Or I can automate upload. So for now I will do report. And I will say in case of error, I would like to receive notification. You have the ability to notify yourself in case of success, you can do it. But if you want to refresh it every three hours, you don't want to receive emails about successful refresh every three hours, right? This will be too much for your email box. But I would prefer for myself, send email notification in case of error. So if I got the error, I can act on this. I can say, okay, either I have to refresh your all queries and templates manually, or I can wait for next cycle, but at least you know something happened. So you apply it, you set up notification. So now this is your schedule. So now we're talking about PL. So probably I don't need to run PL report every three hours, right? You will not have fresh data. Probably for PL, receivable account transactions, I will go daily. So I will go daily and maybe nighttime. So when I come back to work in the morning, I will have fresh data. So this is important. Application by default generate log file for you. This is your monitoring tools and I'm going to show how it works. And this is email. This is email. You can set up email to send the spreadsheet link, reports or Microsoft file to your customers, to your client. And especially when you're on vacation, so you set it up and it works automatically. So I apply and execute. And this way I set up my first workflow. So now I don't want to wait till 4 a.m., right? Because I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. So I want to try it now if it works and show you at the same time this monitoring tools. So I will go to automation. I will go to update, modify, delete workflow. And it will open for me the same kind of windows when I have all my templates. I double click it. And on the left corner, I will set execute now current flow. This is I'm going to execute. So it means I will refresh data. And at the same time, I will show you log file. So automatic operation event log file. This is most important file. And what it shows, it will show that your workflow starts, uh, what templates get refreshed, and what is the status. So if everything's success, it's perfect. You don't have to do anything. But if it's error, then you have to worry about this. So now it's my case. Okay, this is my workflow. It's successful executed, execution ended, and this is timestamp. So this is your data monitoring tools. So now I want to jump a little bit and show you how to change ownership. We receive a lot of questions because what's happened, you might have a team and people get sick, people leaving the company. And if they're working on templates, they set up everything. You don't want to lose that work, right? You don't want to start from scratch whole processes. 
and of what they're supposed to do before they leave. <laughs> they're supposed to go to change template ownership options and change the ownership. So moment the ownership get reassigned, then you can start running the refresh processes and it will not, it will continue without any interruption. Then let's assume this person come back from vacation. You again don't go to change template ownership and change the ownership back to this person. So it's very important. Otherwise, you lose it and you have to do it from scratch. So now what I'm going to show you, I will spend maybe two minutes. I want to show you how to build chart. I will choose very, very simple report and I will show you Google chart and how automatically feed the data in the BI solution. So I do profit and loss. I will do, let's say six periods and I will display only summary on the new tab. I want to show you how to very easy way to create chart. I mean, majority of you probably knows, but who doesn't know, I will show you. Okay, this is my PNL, just summary. What I do, I will go and insert the chart and I will set up, I like to have pie. Yeah, I definitely need to highlight what I need to do, right? Now just do like this, insert chart. And I will go to buy. All right, so let's see. I will close it so you will see my chart over here. All right, so let's assume the process refreshment starts and some data get updated here, right? If you move now, it was total income 9,000. So let's move to 100, 1, 2, 3. This is your refresh data and this is how it works. So this is your natural BI solution. Definitely it can be complicated. You can create more advanced graph, but the idea behind like this, your refresh data automatically and everything change here. I put graph here, you can push your dead, you can put your dashboards, you can put tables, graph, dashboards all together, but idea like this behind. All right, so I think I should stop <laughs> right now and I will probably show you our website. Our website, because we do have documentations, I want to show you it's www.econ services. In case you need documentations, you will go to docs and you can find all documents here and read them step by step, including how to set up BI solution. I also would like to show you this is about our product pricing model and blog. Blogs is very important because we're publishing blogs. Either people ask the same questions or have issues, or they just publish our enhancements there, even before newsletter comes out. So, and I'm sure uh, a lot of people would want to book another session with you um, because it's been really helpful. But there's so much that can be done using GACON with Zero especially as you can share data with you know your clients without have them having access to zero so yeah thanks for that and in terms of pricing how does pricing work for GACon? so you buy per google account per user pricing and as of now we do have light version which has pretty much manual refresh all the processes mm -hmm. manual and you have this is monthly premium which cover both of the plans cover unlimited zero entities. But in the premium, you will have your safe templates in the cloud, you have automation, you have upload, you have multi-currency. So this is the plans we have. Or you can buy annual subscription, which is go 12 by 10. So 12 months for prices of 10 months. Yep. Okay, well, that's quite useful. And yep. you're obviously available for demos if, you know, we're going to share your details with the registrants. So obviously you're available for demos for other people who've uh, attended Absolutely. and have dropped off as well. Absolutely. Correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yes.
And okay. I would like to emphasize, so maybe if you don't have technical questions or you need really solution for your specific purpose. So you need to send us email and support and we will schedule a demo because everyone has different use cases, right? And sometimes exactly, it's not yeah. straightforward how to use this tool, but we will help you guys out, yes. <laughs> cool. Does anyone have any questions at the moment? I know that it's, it's quite a lot to take in, but I'm sure what, everyone, what you've seen, you know, when I first saw this product, I was, you know, I was really amazed by it. There's a lot that can be done, especially with automation, especially with providing information in real time. Please put your questions in the chat box if you have any questions. Obviously, you also do QuickBooks as well. You also do HubSpot. You also yes. mentioned that you can select between entities as well. So I guess one thing that would be quite useful for the accountants here is, you know, if you have some sort of dashboard for all of your clients, you can literally switch between each one and, you know, you know, look, look at certain things to kind of help improve the information that you share with clients, correct? Yes, yes, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. And, and another thing I want to mention, when you get comfortable this G-Con Fox Zero, you will have the same look and feel, it's the same UI for HubSpot and QuickBooks. So you don't have to relearn it because it looks the same and functionality very similar. So when you jump between two products, you will be comfortable as soon as you're comfortable with this one product. That's great. And as has asked, pricing is per username. Is that correct? Yes, this is per user. Yeah, Rayhan, we're working on domain licensing for per organization, but it will be yeah. available maybe close to November. What it does for you, it's, it's allowed to maintain your set of users by yourself. So for now, we have, to, we have to do it manually, but as soon as domain is out, we have domain per company, and then person who is admin of this domain will be able to add user, remove user, set up different privileges, because sometimes you don't want everyone go ahead and update, upload even, anything to your zero entities, right? This may be only one or two people who is really responsible for this, but another team member can be involved only in automated refresh processes, right? So that will be very yeah. useful functionality, but maybe in November. I mean, I'd, I'd also like to add the fact that, I mean, we've been using JCon for quite some time now and, you know, every so often they're always bringing in new updates. So, you know, if you do take on JCon, I mean, you've just mentioned today to me that, you know, you have that new functionality where you can switch between entities. And, yes. you know, you guys obviously have come a long way since, since you started. And, you know, the fact that, you know, you are, we take on your services you don't just get what you have here you know we'll have future benefits as well just how zero is always bringing in new updates you're obviously doing that as well yeah yeah and i would like to add we don't we purposefully don't have this modular approach so moment we have new enhancement we don't increase prices so it will be part of your package whatever you start using so Okay, and, and the biggest question that I have is, at what point would you think you'd do consolidations? Consolidation reports? Yeah, or yes. some sort so, of template. Yes, so as of now, definitely you can do it by yourself because we allow you to set up templates, right? You have all the data, you can consolidate report by yourself, but we will be working on consolidation reports through one button clicks. So it's our future enhancement, which we're planning to release somewhere in 2021. So it's a little bit bigger task for us. Yep. Yeah, but it, it's, it's coming. Yep. Yeah. I'm personally looking forward to that. So. <laughs> yes, yes, I know that. <laughs> Anyone else have any, any other questions? Nope. I think we'll wrap it up now then. Do you have any closing thoughts in terms of, you know, GA corn and, and what the value it can provide? So, so I, would, I would say, I mean, <laughs> everyone see benefits that it can be used. Let me see if we do have another question. If we will subscribe to corn, we can use one account as organization and need to set up. No, no, no. Like I said, we have unlimited organizations. So you buy one license and if you generate as accountant, right, if you're handling like 10 different entities, you don't need to buy another license for another zero entities. So it will be a part of your monthly pricing. 
So I think I answered this question, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's a, it's a big benefit. You have the ability to see your data, to manipulate data, to do custom reports. So, and what we would like you guys to do, we would like you to try because there is no agreement, there is no contract. You use our tool, you in, you pay, you don't have clients anymore. You send us a mail and said, okay, I would like to cancel. We will cancel, no question asks. So basically this tool helps you. And we have 14 days as a, a free trial. And you can go ahead, put your hands, ask us questions. We don't want to start using our tools and then figure out, oh, okay, this is not tools I'm looking for. So you spend your time, you check if it's your tools, and then uh, ask us questions. And if it's really good for your business, we will be happy. And from another angle, if you feel something is missing, we like to hear this too, because you guys accountants, you know your business better than us. So we're listening to you. <laughs> so. Great. Okay, I think, I think we'll wrap it up. Thank you very much for your time. Yelena, thank you very much for you presenting the you know, GA con to us. And thank um, you. Thank you for having think... me here. And thank you everyone for, to come to our webinar. <laughs> Hopefully your subscription numbers shoots up in the UAE. In terms of the next steps, we are recording this webinar and we will be sharing it on YouTube. So we'll send everyone the link to the webinar. We'll also give you the details for Yelena. So if you want to have your own, you know, demos, one-to-ones with her, then, then, then you can by all means do that. You know, yep. if anything, at least take on a 14-day trial period, um, no obligation. Um, you can play around with it, test it out. And yeah, thank you very much for your time. And yeah, we'll pass on the details to you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Take care, guys.